All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. Sad, sad day in the basketball world, man. If you love basketball, if you came up with basketball, if basketball was your escape, sad day, man. And, uh, you know, I wanted to just do a regular 2K video, gloss over it, and keep on going, but I can't, I cannot do it. Y'all already know what's going on, man, unless you've been in a hole, if you... And if you watch the news, if you watch anything, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We lost the beam, man. Lost the beam yesterday. And it's rough. Because if you love basketball and you love the notion of hard work, that's why it's particularly hard for us. I mean, I know a lot of people always be like, well, you know, you don't know the person. You didn't know them. You didn't interact with them. They didn't even know who you were. If you if something happened to you, they wouldn't care. But see, that's the thing with inspiration. It's funny like that. When a person inspires you, you feel like you know that person, right? So, so think about it like this. That coach that you had in high school, right? He's coached a million kids, a million kids, a thousand kids, thousands of kids, right? You got inspired by that coach. Coach hit 65 or whatever. He didn't coach so many kids. At least you, like, I know a lot of people going to say at least you met him. But like I said, like this, my coach, my, my defensive back coach, Coach Dabs, one of the best defensive back coaches to ever do it. He showed me how to be a better defensive back, the best defensive back. As just a true athlete, he showed me how to do all of that at a time when I was not. I just was I wasn't always physically like I am now. Probably in high school, I probably was like 5'8, 150, 160 maybe. Now I was probably 160 up until I was, you know, I graduated. I was like, you know, 6'4 when I graduated or whatever. But the whole point of it is, if I went back now, he would probably have a hard time recalling me. Right? So, but he inspired me to be the best version of me that I could be, especially playing basketball and stuff like that. Play, he's also a, ba a girls basketball coach too, won the state title and all that, didn't have a play over 5'9". But the whole point is, just because a, a person can, it's possible whether you met the person or not met the person, for a person to mean a lot to you, but they might not even remember you recognize like a lot of y'all out there right now that watch my videos if something happens to me y'all would be like devastated or, or hurt and all that but like i might inspire you guys but you guys like i don't know you guys per se i meet people a lot of time i met one guy at the gym today and he was saying yo ain't you locked down university i love your videos blah 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 this and that right when i met him it felt like we just knew each other. Uh, you know, I dap him up, you know, do the thing. We talked about we talked about the bean for a little bit, man, and then we just, we, we, we pushed off, went our own ways. But there's a lot of times other people, like, when somebody, somebody, you don't have to meet somebody for them to mean something to you. If you drew inspiration from somebody, then that person can mean something to you. Or what have you. I don't think I got to explain this. Y'all know what I'm saying, man. Kobe was basketball personified. Let me tell y'all what, what, what it means to me. Hard work and basketball are like two of the things. That, that's just all I got in this world, it felt like. I stopped playing basketball so much because I couldn't play anymore. Because I felt like I was disrespecting the game. I loved the game of basketball so much to where I was like, once I got to where I can't play no more, that's it. I'm not going to disrespect this game by playing. I'm not going to do that. Kobe was basketball personified to some people. Like, it's just like you saw him work hard. You saw he wasn't the most talented. He wasn't the biggest. He wasn't the strongest. He wasn't the fastest. He wasn't the most talented in anything. But all he did was work on his game. And he came, and, a lot, and he's a lot more visible than a lot of the other stars because. He came up in a time where the internet was in his infancy. He was on all types of shows. Brandy, Hang Time, went to the prom with Brandy. Uh, you know, all that stuff like that. Like, these are the things Nickelodeon Kid Choice Awards. Like, he was always on TV or something like that. This is somebody, like, we felt like we grew up with. Like one of my guys said, it feel like one of our classmates passed or something like that. But we were all inspired by him. You can be inspired by somebody. 
and he was basketball personified. So when we lost him yesterday, it feels like we lost a part of basketball. And we love basketball so much that when anytime you lose a part of the game, especially some people, some people didn't have dads like I had to help me learn how to play basketball. But even though I had my dad, I still looked at guys that were playing the game on a different level. I remember being in high school and we saw Kobe on the court. We were going crazy because we were like, this is a guy that is yeah. our age and he's out there performing and playing professional basketball. That's like inspiration to everybody. And like I said, the first two years of his career weren't the greatest, but he just kept working, kept working, kept working. His work ethic became, work ethic became something of legend. And it just let people know, it inspired people to be like, you don't have to be the biggest, the strongest, the most talented, any of that stuff. If you continue to work hard, you can be great at something. Now, I never got great at basketball, but I'm great at computers. I I, I, I took that work. It's something that Stizo said, man. Let me show y'all something that Stizo said, man. This is, this, this, this is it right here. Kobe got a whole mentality that applies to life. It's bigger than basketball. Any Kobe slander on this app, I'm going to just assume the absence of a soul and block you accordingly. But the whole thing is the first. Kobe had a mentality that applies to life. I knew I wasn't going to be a basketball player. I knew I would never be 6'6". I knew I was never going to be the strongest. I wasn't the best shooter. I wasn't any of that stuff. But I could be the best tech guy that I could be. I could learn everything. When I go into a room, I would be quiet. They would think I wasn't even paying attention. We take the test. I ace the test. They're like, yo, what's going on? We thought you weren't even paying attention. No, I'm that focused. Nobody's going to be better than me at what I do. That's something that I learned from Kobe. Even though I didn't know him, never met him, never even been in the same room with him or the same arena or anything. But when somebody inspires you, you can feel it. Plus, being a father and being a father and a husband, I can only imagine my heart aches for everybody involved. Being a father and a husband, I could not imagine somebody coming and saying, your wife ain't coming home. And oh, by the way, your son isn't either. I could not imagine that type of pain. And being in a being a being a parent, we know that the worst fear that we ever have is not being able to fend for our child, not being able to protect our child. I talked to my homeboy today. His son is in college, right? I remember like his name is Russ Dean. His son plays for uh for Hampton. And he says, Hampton University, he said, I remember like even Russ, he's the inspiration to me. He told, he said, somebody was saying one time, oh, you can't mess with me, old head. I done been to jail, blah, blah, blah. Russ told him, hey, I'm proud to never say I never been there. Simple as that. The way that he always took care of his kids and all that. So I'm, and, and it always was an inspiration to me to do the same thing. So when I'm talking to him yesterday and we're sitting here saying, the biggest fear that anybody has in life that has children is to, in, is to be placed in a situation where you can't protect your children. And that's what had me crying yesterday. To lose a child, nobody should have to bury their child ever. But to lose a child, to lose a spouse, and then not be able to protect your child, that's the most devastating feeling that any parent could ever feel. And so that's why a lot of people were feeling the way that they felt yesterday. Not because, you know, we all Kobe heads and we loved him and it was bigger than basketball, man. Anybody, they told, they told me, bro, they told me like here where I live, they were saying that, that, and I don't know, maybe I'm just a waterhead because when anytime I, I hear injustice or people doing this and that, they were talking about there were kids on a bus that couldn't defend themselves here. They were on a bus one of them was, uh, they were both, these, these kids, both of these kids had special needs and they had been assaulted on the bus. I guess the, 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 uh, the people on the bus had touched them inappropriately. And I'm like ready to strap up and go find these people that did something to them because I feel like, like injustice is just injustice. And this is one of the greatest injustices I've ever seen in my life. Nobody should have to bury their child. 
Nobody should have to bury their spouse. In a perfect world, we would just all go together and, and it's like that. But I also don't want you guys to just concentrate on, to me, that's what the whole thing is about. But there are more victims than just that. All these people left people behind and we can't even imagine the pain that they are in. Look at look at uh, John Alabelli. They say he was a he was a coach, a college um, a, co a junior college coaching legend, right? You telling me, even though he may not remember every single person whose life he touched, I touch people's lives every day. I don't even know that I'm touching these people's lives, and I know the people. It's a little boy in the gym. I used to go in there and I taught him how to shoot the basketball. Like two or three years ago, every day I would see him trying to play and I was like, yo, let's shoot, let's shoot around together. Let me show you how to shoot this basketball and become better. Now he's playing for his high school team, but his mama used to always, like two or three years later, his mama, I, I'm not even thinking nothing about this. I don't, I don't even know the kid's name. I just used to see him trying. He was struggling. I helped him. He played high school basketball now. And his mom used to always say, hey, your, your biggest fan is in there. And that, it, I, it never dawned on me that he looked up to me like that because I'm looking like I'm just an old head. Just I'm just trying to help him with his form and stuff. But he like, hey, your biggest fan, he in there. He waiting on you. Like, what you mean? Like, I missed, because I, I, I had hurt myself and I, and I missed a few days at the gym and stuff like that. But the whole point is you never know who's watching you, where they gonna draw inspiration from and all of that stuff, man. You don't know the people that you inspire. That's why we gotta be careful of the things that we do, careful of the things that we say and all of that stuff, man. You have to. But like I said, man, I understand that we didn't know Cole. He wouldn't be able to tell me from a can of paint. But at the same time, that don't mean that we didn't draw inspiration from him. And when you draw in for inspiration from somebody, that means something to you. And that person means something to you. Whitney Houston died, Bridget was just having a fit because she loved music. She loves all that. She loved Whitney. And Whitney was her inspiration. Mike was a lot of people's inspiration and all that, man. But, you know, one more time, we're just going to show my man and his family. It just breaks my heart that these people have to go home. And they, gonna, they don't have their mom. They don't have their father. They don't have their sister. And now they got to try to figure this thing out by themselves. That broke my heart. That's why a lot of people were, were crying and all of that stuff yesterday. It just feels like, like, like basketball. And the connection that we have to basketball is what we got. So we all grieving. We all hurting. And we didn't talk 12 minutes about that. I'm sorry for doing that. Y'all ain't got to work through no ads or nothing. I just got, I got to do this because like I said, I just, re I don't restart the video five times and I just, I done cried every single time. Just thinking about the whole aspect, the family aspect, the families who lives are changed forever. And it just, it hurts so bad. Y'all, y'all gonna tell me that y'all wouldn't cry. Y'all ain't gonna cry for Bree easy. If something happens to me, or if I told y'all something happened to El, something, something, God forbid, something happened to, to those two that I love. And y'all, would y'all tell me y'all not gonna cry for me? And, and a lot of y'all I never met. I met a lot of y'all, but a lot of y'all I never met. But I mean, it is what it is, man. So I ain't gonna tell nobody how to feel. Grieve how you gotta grieve. Do what you gotta do. We gonna move forward, but we will never move on, man. I just wanna show y'all some other stuff, man, real quick. This broke my heart because this is everybody this is everybody i don't think it's one person on the planet that hasn't done this at one time or another this is everybody it is what it is my boy rampage put this out man this is how we feel my boy ramp put that out man we already talked about that. I want y'all to listen to this young man right here from LA. Tell you what Kobe meant to him. For Kobe and, and Michael also I want y'all to listen to this. This guy, he's from LA. Very special tattoo. Yeah, yeah, I've been a Kobe fan. I'm born in 96, so Kobe, he came in in 96. Ever since then, I comprehend I've been a Kobe fan. I got this tattoo way back. Just, you know, Kobe just meant the world to me and all of us out here in LA. Growing up, just idolizing somebody who just dedicates their grind to their craft and 
they don't make them like that anymore. Everybody want to take the easy route, but Kobe, he was willing to never be satisfied at where he was, and he always wanted to push to a higher level, and you don't see that no more. So I just appreciate everything you did, Cole, for real. And I pray for his family, his wife and all that, his daughter, none of them deserved that. She was going to be a star, but I, I'm thankful for everything he's done and motivation. Nipsey, too. Rest in peace, man, for real. That's crazy how both of the murals just happen to be right here. That, that should tell us something like, Hopefully it inspires people, you know, just to be the best versions of themselves. We could be idolized one day. Michael, Michael, thank you so much. And I think that that what he said is just is just everything in a nutshell. It's like we can do it. It's like if somebody shows you that they weren't the greatest, they weren't the most physically gifted, they weren't the most physically talented, but you can do it too. If I can do it, you can do it. That's, that's just one of those things, man. And those people in L.A. lost Nip. And they lost Cole. Same time. So many people that draw inspiration from, from him. And the main thing is, like, this little girl didn't even get a chance to start her life. Didn't even get a chance to start her life. You got kids, man. That I don't even have to say nothing else, man. Like, I'm literally choking back tears right now because anytime I hear anything happen to a little kid, it does something to me, man. It, it just hit different, man. But we're going to try to keep moving forward. And we're going to move. Look at that, man. Like, carving copy. Like, he spit her out. That's is what it is. The moral of the whole story is you never know where you're going to draw inspiration from. You never know who draws inspiration from you. And if you got issues with your fam, let's try to make it right right now, man. Because we don't know. We don't never know when that's going to be. We, we just, I mean, I ain't going to talk about that. We just going to go forward and keep going, man. Tarsino was doing an 81 win streak uh, deal, but 2K shut it down with the update required. So he said he's going to try again tomorrow. He's going he gonna to go at a 55 he already probably was over it because he would have been like a 61. So uh, when he was at like 40, so he, would, he probably would have done it. But yo, he got. A, he said he's gonna start at zero again, and he gonna go from there, man. Um, I guess the rest of the news don't even really seem important, man. Uh, we we talked about Steezo. Somehow, Bad's plug got banned because you know they said that he did something uh, wrong. They banned him at the beginning of the year, and then at the end of the year. They um, you know, they said he circumvented the ban by by buying another console or something. He didn't even get console banned. They banned the actual account, and so like you know, 2K they 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 on their job screwing up royally as usual. Uh, he he actually created a whole another account, bought another account, whatever you want to say. But the whole thing is he he it's a whole another account. They said that he circumvented it and he has unrealistic badge progress. But I mean, he's a he's a legend, so. Obviously, he's going to get 40 badges every time he, cr he creates another player, man. But, you know, 2K got to get on their job about that, man. Um, like I said, all this stuff just seems unimportant in pairs and comparison. I tried to do the news today. It ended up just being about Kobe and, and, and why I think people, like when people, people, it's not that you idolize people and that you should just idolize your family and stuff like that. It's more that you never know. Like if somebody inspired you, a lot of kids only began playing basketball because they had Kobe. That's the only person that they had to learn from. I watched the Pelicans game the other day. Every single child on that team. I mean, uh, not child, man. Everybody on um, that court. The Pelicans versus who did the Pelicans play yesterday? It was the Pelicans and the uh, and, and the fighting Kimber Walkers, the Celtics. Every child on that court probably except for Kimber was born after 97 and all of them grew up and Kobe was that guy like I said we didn't see Jeff play like that we didn't get to see his legendary work ethic because the internet wasn't around like that we know we saw different videos we saw NBA inside stuff we saw stuff like that but we never got to see Jeff just and when I say Jeff I'll be talking about Mike Mike Jordan man but look because it was, look back then there was so many MJs we had Michael Jordan Mike Jackson uh, you know, we had Mike Tyson, so you couldn't just say Mike. So we said either MJ or I just called him Jeff because, and everybody knew who we was talking about. But look, when Jeff was playing, ain't nobody would really, you, there, there was no internet. You couldn't see that stuff. The only thing you see is little NBA inside stuff, you know, stuff like that with Amar Rashad. Uh, you know, you'll see that here and there. But like now, 
like Kobe came up in the internet age, so it's like we got to see, that's one of the first careers that we were really interested in that we got to see from, from beginning to end. Like I said, ain't nobody idolizing, you, we not, it's not about idolizing the star or anything like that, but if somebody inspired you and you drew inspiration from that, and Kobe was, was he, there's two things in life that I believed in, or did I, did I, hard work and basketball. He personified both of those. So when you lose somebody like that, man, you know, we gonna cut the food for our family too, but when you know the person, just like, okay, let's say my grand, my grandpa died, my grandmama died, like, hey, all the people that knew them cut the food for them. Whether you just knew her or you knew of her, everybody went crazy. So the whole town was at the funeral. These are the people that know, but outside of the town, nobody knows her. So it's like, you can only be this way for people that you know or know of. And then once you become aware of something, then, you know, like I said, this tragedy is all over the world. There's a lot more serious and stuff like that. But that ain't, that, this, ain't, this ain't the time for that right there, man. Right now, we basketball. You wouldn't be on this video if you were not the basketball head, if you didn't feel the way that I did, man. And if, if it's not just for hard work and basketball personified and it feels like we lost a piece of that, the kids, the families involved, that coach, coach, all the stuff, man, like a normal everyday trip. Look, man, all our thoughts go out to the families, well wishes, all this stuff, man. We know we're going to move forward, but we will never move on. And I just want to take us out on a light note, man, because I can't take us out on a sad note. Look, man, I talked to man, man. I was like, bro, I ain't stopped crying all day just because of the whole thing. It ain't, it ain't just about that. It's about the kids to me. When you have children, you guys will understand. If you got children, I know you already understand, but this is all I wanted to show. And we're gonna take us out on a light note, man. Tomorrow will be better, and we're gonna move on. I got stuff coming today, but this is it. Oh, no. Hey, Cole, how you doing? How retirement treating you? It's great, man, it's great. Just uh, you know, a little writing, a little investing. Nice. So I don't know if you saw the thing on Twitter about your statue. Uh, you know, I don't pay attention to that stuff. Man. Yeah, I figured that, me either. A drink, Mr. Brett? Yeah, I'll have a, uh, a, a vodka martini. How many hours would you like? 81. <laughs> really? <laughs> nah, man, I'm just playing. Just two. Joke for him. He gets it. Oh, man. Hey, man, oh, that was no. one of the best commercials ever. But like I said, that showed Kobe's sense of humor and that he was human. And like I said, man, I'm going to take us out. But I'm going to show y'all one of my favorite pictures. Kobe. Right now. This right here is one of my favorite pictures of Kobe that he got right now. Why? Because it shows that even though the hard work and all the sacrifice that you put in, you put it all in. You gave your all. You did everything that you could possibly do for the game. And we lose so many of our athletes to other things, to mental health, to senseless violence, to other stuff like that. But he had transitioned into being a father, a coach, and all that. And him, just being in a hoodie and a beanie, that shows me that he was okay with it. I've transitioned and I'm okay with it. Anyway, man, that's all I got for y'all today, man. I'm sorry I took up all y'all's time. I hope y'all guys understand where I'm coming from. And like I said, if you feel differently, that's cool. You might want to keep that to yourself today. Just for the day. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be, we're gonna keep it light tomorrow. We're gonna do whatever we gotta do, but today. I ain't nothing wrong with taking the knee one day and get back to it tomorrow. Like I said, we're going to move forward. We'll never move on, man. Anyway, I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Y'all take it easy till next time. It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Godspeed!